Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope for Monday the 11th of April going through until Sunday the 17th of April 2022. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today and I'm going to do the horoscope differently today. The way I usually do these horoscopes is I write down what the planets are doing, how they interact. So for instance, the Virgo moon opposes Venus in Pisces. So I put the, the um, aspect patterns down, oppositions, squares, things like that. And then above it, I write what that means for the day. But I thought it would be fun today to try doing this in the moment. And what I've done is I've written down the actual placements of the planets, but I'm gonna read that. And in the moment, I'm gonna see what comes through um, and just see how it goes. Let me know in the comments if you prefer this or the old way of doing it. And I've never tried this, so I'll see if I prefer it <laughs> or prefer the old way. So I just thought I, I just had the idea to do it differently this week. So let's have a look. Um, the point of these weekly horoscopes is I look at what the planets are doing. That gives me a sense of the energy they create amongst themselves. And the point of the horoscopes is to then look at that energy to see how you can use it to your advantage to have the best time possible. Okay, so we have a, um, a full moon in Libra happening on Saturday the 16th. I just need to put that out there. So that's a, a build up that we're going to experience during the week and I'll make a separate video on the full moon in Libra uh, just to go into more details there but starting with Monday the 11th of April we've got the moon in Leo so the moon is what you tap into naturally and what comes easily and Leo is a fire sign that's ruled by the sun so it's very much about living your life to the fullest and having a good time and enjoying yourself and um, it gives you natural confidence if you think about Leo the time of year because astrology is based on the seasons in the northern hemisphere leo is when the sun's out and the flowers are blooming and the little animals are playing in the fields so it's about being out there being in the public having a good time and really enjoying the easy life and that opposes saturn in aquarius so an opposition is when two planets are 180 degrees away from another and saturn is really the outer planet that's responsible for the rules and structure and what you can and can't do. That's why a lot of times when um, I'm reading someone's birth chart, they're like, oh, when's my Saturn return coming? It seems to be this ominous thing because Saturn scrutinizes you. It says, okay, what are you actually doing? Let's have a look at whether that's on point with your life purpose or not, and whether you're on track or, or if you're off track. And if you're off track, it tends to make life a little bit more difficult in the sense it prompts you to kind of live your purpose and to use the things that you're naturally good at. And then if you are on track, it tends to make life a lot easier. So Saturn is in Aquarius at the moment. So Aquarius is an air sign. It's about humanity. It's about being of service. It's about teaching, learning, um, and thinking about how can I make a positive contribution to the world. So Saturn in Aquarius is serious when it comes to I'm looking at the world at large what's going on in society what my role is within all of that how it affects me and often it can be I'm going to try and fit into all of that in some way I don't want to be out here on an island by myself Saturn in Aquarius gives you a respect for information and usually information comes from other people right so it's going to prompt you to to compromise and to listen and to say, okay, you know what's going on as much as I do. But the Leo moon is very indiv individualistic, <laughs> if that's a word. It's focused on you as an individual, basically. And it says how you're having fun. And the opposition between Saturn and Aquarius and the Leo moon makes you feel somewhat imposed upon. And you may feel like, I want to shrug off all these rules. I don't really want to be told what to do. I don't just want to fit into some sort of format or another person's version of how I ought to live. So that can create a little bit of conflict on Monday and make you a bit of a rebel, which isn't a bad thing. But um, the confidence that Leo Moon gives you is then in direct opposition to the rules in society. So you may get into some conflict or you may not see eye to eye with other people or feel like I don't need to fit into this. And therefore, I lose access to the information that you could possibly give me and that can make you feel isolated. So I think on Monday, the key thing is to connect with people you love and to look at how you can have a good time with, with um, particularly people who are open-minded or to check 
who allows you to be yourself and who tries to put you into a box and polices your behavior and says, this is what we do. And this is what... No one likes that, right? Well, some people like it. The ones that belong to all these super oppressive religions, I suppose. So judge where you're at with that. The Leo moon then squares Uranus and Taurus. Uranus is change and transformation. Taurus is the most earthy of all the signs. It's the ball. It's got four feet firmly planted on the ground. And the two are fundamentally in conflict because Taurus is like, I'm trying to maintain the status quo here. And Uranus is about, I embrace change and I want things to implode or explode at times. It's fun. So with the Leo moon and this square, friction between the moon and Uranus, I think there's going to be a, a sense of optimism and enthusiasm. And if things do come in, if you receive news that, are, that, are, um, that you weren't planning on dealing with, it actually presents as a challenge. And it's like, oh, wow, something new is happening. I'm certainly not bored. I've got something to work with. And how can I run with that now? So it encourages you to embrace change. The Leo moon then trines the sun and Chiron in Aries. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, the ram. It likes to make progress. And the sun is your identity. Your identity is in the fire sign Aries. The moon is in the fire sign Leo. So you're not going to be struggling for confidence here. And Chiron is the wounded healer. Also in Aries, it says it's up to you to plan your life and to enjoy yourself and how you can make things better for yourself. It's not so useful to re rely on other people and to expect them to make everything better. And I have a lot of control here. I know how to um, arrange things so that they suit me. And what am I going to do with that? So it puts a lot of responsibility on you, but it also gives you a lot of freedom. The um, Leo moon then also quincux is Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces. And that's lovely because Jupiter is good luck, good fortune. Pisces is your connection with source, it's spirituality. So you, you feel this natural confidence in yourself, this amazing self-belief. And then Neptune and Pisces, the dream planet of intuition, you know how to handle things which may be scary or chaotic. So on Monday, um, the key thing is to go with the flow to face whatever is coming your way and to use your intuition to navigate those things and also to say, how can I have fun amidst all of this? Tuesday, the 12th of April, we've got the Leo moon now forming an opposition with Mars in Aquarius. Mars is the personal planet of drive and ambition. In Aquarius, again, it's about, I want information, I want to learn, I want to teach, I want to do something good for other people. And it's interesting because Saturn is an outer planet that's very restrictive. Mars, again, is very individualistic. And it says, what can I learn and what can I do to implement information so that it serves me and my needs? So this allows you to see solutions to problems because you're willing to look and to say, how can I analyze this and work my way through it while having fun? And the moon also quincuxes Pluto and Capricorn on Tuesday. So Pluto's change, Capricorn is the sign of the worker. This is fabulous because if you're not thrilled with your job or you've been trying to look at alternatives, what can I do that would suit me a bit more? These three combine to say, look at your options. You're not stuck in one situation. Pluto gives you, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's like you have, you have other choices here. You don't have to live in this rigid, blinkered kind of existence. It's your life and Pluto's life and death as well, right? So it says it's your life. It's not going to last forever and ever and ever. So make the most of it now. And it doesn't do that in a way that feels pressured or frightening. It simply aligns you with this flow of life and you're like, okay, every moment I can do something with. The moon then enters Virgo. It's seven minutes past four in the afternoon. We had a full moon in Virgo um, recently, a few weeks ago, and I was looking forward to it, but it was a very difficult time. And what I found very difficult was Virgo can be obsessive when it comes to detail. It's good at analysis and making sense of things, but if you then take it to the extreme and you start to just hone in on one thing, you lose perspective of everything else, and it can become very unhealthy. It's like you just 
churn over the same thing again and again. It's like a resentment, you know, like you, it keeps coming up and you analyze it and it keeps coming up. So the best thing to do with this Virgo moon is to use it to figure out problems in your life, particularly practical problems. The Virgo moon then opposes Venus in Pisces. Oh, so that's nice. It allows you to create in a practical way and it trines Mercury in Taurus. So the communication planet is in the earth sign Taurus. This is fabulous for anyone who's who's uh, working creatively to make things more beautiful. If you want to work on your life, on your physical appearance, on your health, on your job, anything that has a tangible physical element to it, you're able to use the imagination that Venus and Pi Pisces affords you with. It gives you access to the infinite and what could be. And then Mercury and Taurus and the Moon allow you to translate that into something practical straight away. Jupiter and Pisces conjunct Neptune and Pisces. So that's really beautiful. It's like this era of harmony and peace and love. So, oh, if that's been an issue for you, your love life or relationships, how do I really feel in this relationship? What do I want to do about it? You'll understand that very clearly. The Virgo moon allows you to analyze your relationship, the everydayness of it, and what you want to do to improve, if you want to improve. It's also a great time to meet someone new who's on the same wavelength, and you'll, you'll know that this is someone who can offer you something if there's a natural sense of harmony and a natural ease in your connection. The Sun in Aries sextiles Saturn in Aquarius. That's interesting because on Monday, whereas there was this conflict between the fire moon and Saturn in Aquarius, the Sun in the fire sign Aries versus the outer planet Saturn in Aquarius, you may be very reluctant to listen to instruction or to be told what to do. And it can even make you somewhat aggressive when others are putting roadblocks in your way. And it's almost like, it's not just my job to blast my way through this, but it's my responsibility to get rid of these obstacles for other people as well. So you may want to educate people who you think are wrong. Is it really your job to educate people? Are you getting paid to educate people? Is it good? I, quick story. I went to the dentist the other day and um, I go to the dentist and I wasn't in such a good mood anyway, to be honest. Um, and I'm sitting there, I'm on time and um, there's this German rap music blaring loudly. And I'm like, I'm at the dentist. Like, what is this? And um, it was just like a dental hygiene appointment. And the woman was like, hey, I'll be there with you in a minute. I'm just going to get a drink. So I'm like, fine. Okay. So she goes, gets her drinks, comes back. But instead of taking me into the room, she starts a fight with the other receptionist people. Like she starts arguing with them loudly at reception for 10 minutes. And I'm sitting there, I'm listening to the rap music. She's arguing. I'm like, okay. So obviously the, the, the fight was more important than my appointment. <laughs> and then she looks at me and she's like, come in. She snapped her fingers at me, which... Oh. So I was like, fine. So I go in, I put my bag down. She's like, that's not where you put your bag. You put it there. And um, I was like, fine. Wow, this is getting a little bit rough here. And then I, she's like, sit down. I was like, okay. Sat down, I said, can I wash my mouth out? Can I get a bit of water to rinse out my mouth before you start, you know? It's like, in a moment. <laughs> and um, I did feel the need to educate her. <laughs> I was like, listen, okay. This isn't working for me. One, you're being way too strict with me. I didn't like all the noise, blah, 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 blah. And I um, tried to educate her on what I didn't like. But at the end, I just walked out and I didn't get my teeth cleaned. So the education didn't help anybody. I don't think she was sitting there afterwards going, hmm, I wonder if he was right. She was probably like, okay, one less appointment for me today. So it's that kind of thing that I'm talking about. It's just like, I couldn't help myself, but it's just like, really is this required wednesday the 13th of april we've got the moon in virgo opposing venus in pisces so now there's an opposition or they're 180 degrees away from each other so you're still focused on the practical it gives you an ability to work with the earth and substance to analyze to sort out your schedule to perm your hair to um, sort out the garden to look at your diet 
Um, and Venus in Pisces is the spiritual and it's, it's this optimism. So on Wednesday, you could become a little bit nitpickety and again, overly focused on the, the trivial little details that don't really help in the big scheme of things. And it trines Uranus and Taurus. So the great thing here now is that you're less imaginative and you're less uh, likely to say, oh, I'm so blissed out, everything is wonderful, but you're far more able to problem solve and to work with unforeseen circumstances that at other times would really throw you. So you're super grounded, you know exactly what's going on and you, you really understand things like that. The Virgo moon then also quincuxes Chiron and Aries. So it says, what's my part in this? Or yes, what is my part in this? What do I need to take responsibility for? But also what's my opportunity in this? If I'm having to deal with all these news, how can I use this news to my advantage and how can I get ahead in a way? So you're really supporting yourself on your own journey. Thursday, the 14th of April, we've got the Virgo moon forming an opposition with Neptune and Jupiter in Pisces. Now, Neptune and Jupiter in Pisces, I really like this energy. It is love and it's life is beautiful and things could be amazing. And because they're both outer planets, they kind of crush the Virgo moon here, this tendency to obsess about, um, you know, whereas Virgo moon is really good in, in, in altering your diet and stuff and sorting out the garden. It's not so good when um, there's no practical outcome to it. And it's almost like ruminating on something that really has no bigger purpose. And it's just sitting there in bed at three in the morning and going, oh my God, this is the worst. And da, da, da. you know, I hope not. Well, do you know um, <laughs> what I mean by that is we all have a tendency or I certainly do to look at something in my life and to just analyze it to death, even if it doesn't benefit me. And with this opposition here, the positivity of Neptune and Jupiter outweigh this tendency to ruminate and to worry about things that are outside of your control. So I think this tendency to obsess is mitigated by these outer planets and the day feels a lot easier. Okay, the Virgo moon then trines Pluto in Capricorn and it quincuxes Saturn in Aquarius, the sun in Aries and Mars in Aquarius. Wow, okay. So change is something that you welcome and embrace. The rules don't feel so oppressive and you're able to pick and choose what you want to um, take on board and what you want to ignore. So you're less confrontational. You're just like, how does this benefit me? The sun in Aries allows you to make a lot of progress and Mars in Aquarius makes you this research giant who can understand pretty much anything that's going on in your life and how then you can use it for yourself to make progress in any area, your love life, your health, your work, travel, um, changing your practical circumstances around. So on Thursday, if you want to move and you haven't quite figured out where you want to go, have a look at that. It's a good opportunity. The moon goes into Libra at 10.46 in the evening. So Libra is much more about balance and it's about the community and seeing um, yeah, the good in other people and how things can be fair. So that makes you less focused on yourself, but it gives you more um, a greater ability to, again, research and to learn from others, I think. Friday, the 15th of April, we've got Mars going into Pisces at six, minute, six minutes past five in the morning. And Mars is drive and where you want to get to. And in Pisces, it, it gives you a sense that I want to understand something on a spiritual level and I want to see the bigger picture here. And with Neptune and Jupiter being so close this week, I really feel that's fabulous because you see something amazing in yourself that just kind of arises out of you, like, you know, Atlantis coming, coming out of the ocean again. The Libra moon opposes Chiron in Aries and quincuxes Mercury and Uranus in Taurus and it quincuxes Venus in Pisces. Okay, so there's friction now between society and other people and what's, what's fair and nice versus what I want. So it it's almost like animalistic. It's like my drives and desires are just as important as what society says is acceptable and isn't. 
and I need to look after myself. So that can prompt you to kind of keep secrets or to go undercover and to isolate and to say, what am I ashamed of but can't help? That's interesting. What am I ashamed of and can't help? The only thing I've been taught about that really is um, secrets keep us sick. That's from the recovery people. And I remember I was doing my, my inventory with my sponsor, step four, and I was ashamed of certain things. And I was like, I'm about to say something really shocking. And then I said it and he was like, oh, was that it? He was not shocked at all. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's something good to remember that if something isn't 100, well, I mean, this is a weird topic, but if something isn't above board 100%, doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong and doesn't necessarily mean you have to be ashamed of it. And look at that, whether you're applying rules that you were taught or whether you want to think for yourself. Because if it's within you, then it's there for a reason and it's trying to tell you something. So that's interesting. Mercury and Uranus and Taurus, that again allows you to be very practical and to embrace change and to say, yeah, I can do better than this or I can live somewhere else or this envi environment really inspires me. So how can I bring more of it into my life? And it quincuxes Venus in Pisces. So an appreciation for love and beauty and love. You love love on Friday. And I feel that you see the best in others, which is important because what you bring to the table, you get back, right? If you go out and you say everyone's a miserable nightmare, then <laughs> it's likely that people will reflect that, which kind of is what happened when I went to the dentist, because like I said, I wasn't in a good mood. Um, so being able to see, yeah, the, the, the gorgeousness in other people's personalities and, and characteristics and and everything that they're about. I don't know about you, but like, I remember I was working in an office once and um, I um, was really good friends with this one guy. And then something happened, like where we, we disagreed about something to do with the work. And afterwards I, I saw him very differently and I was like, wow, isn't it interesting how just because one thing has happened, you're now telling a whole different story and you feel very differently about a person who hasn't really ch who hasn't changed at all from two days ago, but now your your view of that person has completely changed. And it made me realize that it's it's important to kind of keep an open mind about people and to try and look at the good stuff and not to go into this narrative or they're hundred percent amazing or they're hundred percent bad. We're all blended, right? Well, it's very wise. I need to apply that for myself. The, this is why I like astrology, you see, because it's a tool. It genuinely does contain wisdom. It's not like I'm coming up with this stuff. And the planets creating this together allows you to tap into it. So if you have a tendency to really look at um, something negatively all the time, then on Friday, you can flip that perspective around and see something valuable in it. Saturday, the 16th of April, we've got the Libra moon opposing the sun in Aries. So that's interesting. Um, I want to be in harmony with everyone, but I also want to make progress myself. Which one do I pursue? Which one's going to work better? It squares Pluto in Capricorn. So it's complicated by Pluto in Capricorn because some of the um, curveballs that you're going to be thrown on Saturday come via other people. And then it's like, do I fix this situation with them or do I just shut down and do my own thing. It trines Saturn in Aquarius, that escalates the situation. It's like, I am always being sabotaged by my colleagues. <laughs> Speaking of narratives, or I'm the only person who struggles on this planet, why me? So with this, I think using the balance that the Libra moon affords you is a good idea. And Whereas the day before on Friday, you're able to really look beyond the narrative and see like a bigger truth. On Saturday, you're taking two steps backwards and it's almost like I, I need to tell myself something to justify the way I'm feeling. It's like I need to blame someone else 
and equinoxes, Neptune and Jupiter in Pisces, which totally complicates Saturday because that's still the um, affinity for love and connection and beauty and hope for a better future. So Saturday, I feel, is going to be a bit of a challenge because on one hand, it's like me, me, me. And then on the other hand, it's all about them. And then in the middle saying, well, if I want to be happy, though, I need other people. So how do I combine the thing? And I want to pull my hair out. I think the easiest way forward is to stay practical and solve with, deal with problems that inf influence and affect you specifically in the moment as they arise. And you surround yourself with people who don't put a lot of pressure on you, who you have a natural affinity for anyway. And you're open to meeting new people and um, using this, this, this quality of I can see the best in you, or even I'm willing to let you surprise me, or I'm willing to get to know you in a very simple way. Finally, Sunday, the 17th of April, we've got the moon going into Scorpio at 2.23 in the morning. Scorpio is very intense. It's emotionally interested in, in, in making a connection which gives you something in return. So, um, intense experiences. I want to be in love because it's the state of being, or I want to know that I matter to my family. I want to look at the deep, dark, hidden truths in order to transform and heal them. It's, it's, it wants. Scorpio is very much about, <clears throat> I don't want everything to just be ho-hum. I want things to matter. So the Scorpio moon then trines Venus in Pisces and Mars in Pisces. So this is interesting because this is the desire for love and connection. So on a spiritual level, that's always available to you. On a practical level, we can't just, you know, if you're single and you say, okay, I want to be saying, excuse me, I want to be whispering sweet nothings into someone's ear at lunch. It's 10 in the morning, I'm single. I, you can't just snap your fingers and create the boyfriend. <laughs> so that can be frustrating. So there's an intense desire for connection and um, to be given something. So I think if, if you're totally on your own and you can't demand anything from other people, then having a spiritual connection is going to offset that pressure. If you are in relationships, I would watch out for this not to be overly demanding of people on Sunday. Because just because you want something, does that justify it? I want you to pay attention to me and to tell me how wonderful I am, okay? And if you don't do it, I'm going to get really angry about this. No, no. Most people would be like, okay. <laughs> the Scorpio moon then opposes Mercury and Uranus and Taurus. So I'm dissatisfied with the way things are in my life. So I'm just going to burn all my bridges. And it quincuxes Chiron and Aries. That's actually practical and that kind of lifts you out of this, this um, intense space. And it says, well, what can I actually do if I want all these things? Because, okay, so that's the, the blessing of Sunday. The universe reveals to you what you truly desire, what has been a, what you want. Because uh, sometimes we don't know, like, do I want to be in a relationship or not? Do I want to have a very responsible job? Or not? Do I want social standing or do I not care about it? And there are certain things like early in the week, things that exist within us, these desires that um, demand to be looked at and they demand attention. So with this, you'll find it very clear. You'll, you'll, it's not going to be the most comfortable process but you'll definitely understand what your inner desires, your inner kind of pressure is prompting you to look at. And it gives you a new direction. It gives you a new focus. So it's like this looking within or understanding yourself better without really trying. These things are knocking on your head saying, hello, can you look at me, please? I need some, I need to be dealt with. Otherwise I'm going to keep knocking. Mercury and Taurus sextiles Venus and Pisces and it conjuncts Uranus and Taurus. 
So you're still very adaptable here. You're willing to um, embrace change. You're really able to be inspired by your circumstances, by other people, by beauty in the world. Physical comfort and intense experiences uh, feel important, like they're speaking to you. And it's that willingness to see things which are intense that actually connect then with your imagination and your intuition via Venus and Pisces. And they say, okay, you now know what you want. You can see how your life is adaptable, what you could do to change it. And then here are the action steps that you can take to affect change. So you can solve all of your life problems on Sunday, the 17th of April. I'm kidding. But you can solve a lot because you know exactly who you are and what you want. So, yeah. Okay, so that's the week as far as I can um, tell via the planets and the energy they create. Please do tell me whether you prefer this because for me it's more in the moment. But what I may not have noticed is that I'm missing specifics. Like Monday is a good day to invest money or something, you know, or Wednesday is a good day to be open to love. If you feel like, if you've watched my previous horoscopes and you feel that this is less instructive, then let me know. If you feel that it's more in the moment and you prefer it, let me know. But even if it's more, just let me know what you prefer, please. I'd appreciate it. I actually enjoyed doing this in the sense that I had to use my intuition as I looked at the planets. But obviously, again, if I've if it's detracted from the ultimate point of the horoscope, which is to look at the energy to see how you can use it, please let me know. I just want to, I just had the idea to change this today for some reason. Okay, so I hope you have a great week. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. I use astrology, the tarot, and numerology in my personal readings. If you have any questions about your life purpose or travel or where to live, what's coming up in future, uh, finance, relationships, anything at all really, then please do get in touch with me for a personal reading. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share the video online. Have an amazing week and I'll speak to you next week. All the best.